Well, a big good morning to my North Park Huron community. I trust this morning that that worship experience lifted your heart and lifted your soul as you just sang with everything you had to Jesus. And so thankful for these moments. So right now, if you if you have kids and uh, you would like for them to engage the ministry videos, those videos are now uploaded and ready to go. So if you want to grab a tablet or a phone or whatever device you might need, I uh, will give you a moment now to do that and you can set your kids up with the ministry videos for today and we trust that will be an encouragement to them and an encouragement to you as the parents. So I trust that along the way uh, this summer you've found good ways and rhythms to just enjoy this season and I hope that you're enjoying this series, this summer series that we're doing called Summer Smorgasbord. It's going to kind of just be a variety of uh, things, variety of topics, variety of speakers from uh, people all across the country, really. And so I'm super pumped about uh, this series. Uh, I'm glad we get an opportunity to to do it. And so today we're going to jump in uh, to, to a teaching from a friend of mine. My friend's name is Preston. 
Preston is a pastor in Chestermere, Alberta. Him and I met uh, back in 2009 uh, doing doctoral studies at Tyndale Seminary and we've remained friends over the years and uh, we've been following each other's ministries and and we've just always had good conversations around the good work that God is doing in our lives, in our families and in our churches. On Pentecost Sunday this year, Preston uh, preached a message from his backyard on the role of the Holy Spirit in the lives of people. And I watched it uh, a couple of times now. And after I watched it the first time, I thought, I'd love for my church to see this. So I reached out to Preston and said, hey, as a part of our summer series, would you mind uh, if we could have permission to kind of bring that video in uh, and just for you in that way, to be able to speak to us, to just to be able to give us what you feel God is saying to you these days about how the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. And he, uh, he gracefully obliged. And so we are now going to go, we're going to, we're going to watch that sermon from Preston Puto in Chestermere, Alberta, which was originally broadcast on Pentecost Sunday. But boy, it really just does a, it does a great job of just reminding us of what God's Holy Spirit does in our lives and how we should be constantly on the watch for him. And so Preston is a very unique a flamboyant individual. He's got his own sense of style. You'll quick, you'll quickly pick that up as we kind of engage this sermon together today. I'm so excited for this. So right now, uh, without any more, uh, without any further ado, we are going to go to Chestermere, Alberta, uh, to my friend Preston Puteau. We're going to go to his backyard as he teaches us about the Holy Spirit's role in our lives. So you're going to enjoy this. Let's do it. Hey, uh, it is raining. I sat up here when there was actually some sun out, and uh, then it started raining, and for a moment I was like, oh no, we should probably pack up and go inside or do something. And I thought, ah, it'll, it'll be my first sermon out in the rain, and uh, so let's, let's enjoy it. Uh, rain is what we need right now to help things grow, and this morning we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Because uh, the Holy Spirit gives us a way of thinking about how we engage with God and the world around us. And sometimes the Holy Spirit has been likened to a lot of different things, but the Holy Spirit is also considered living water, Jesus says. And so what's more living than having the rain coming down on us here this morning? So I'm going to pray and we're going to talk about a few things and then dive in together. So I'm just going to make sure, hope everything's working okay. Okay, good, good. I'm still figuring all these things out. Um, so let's pray together. Heavenly Father, good morning to you. Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, welcome. We come to you today as your people who rely on you, who need you, who trust you, and uh, we thank you for your gift of love and your gift of life today. Thank you that you, Holy Spirit, have come and you have come to dwell in your people and you dwell in each and every one of us. And so thank you this morning for everybody, wherever they are, whatever they are facing, thank you that the one thing we have in common is that your Holy Spirit is dwelling in the homes of your people around our community and this world today. And across your church, around the world, where people have to be a part because of this crazy pandemic, your Holy Spirit continues to teach and comfort and guide and fulfill all that Jesus said you would fulfill. And so bless us this morning, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read first uh, for us a uh, sonnet. It is actually uh, pass, or, uh, Pentecost. Uh, so this is Pentecost Sunday, and so it, it's fitting that our series on the Holy Spirit would begin on Pentecost Sunday. And uh, we actually, we actually didn't, didn't, didn't plan that. We like to think we are a lot more planful than, than, than that, but, uh, but it was awesome to, to, to put those two together. So let me read this. Uh, of course, the story of Pentecost is when God's Spirit came upon uh, Jesus' disciples and, uh, and was given to everybody who follows Jesus. And this is how this sonnet goes. Today we feel the wind beneath our wings. Today the hidden fountain flows and plays. Today the church draws breath at last and sings. As every flame becomes a tongue of praise. This is the feast of fire, air, and water, poured out and breathed and kindled into earth. The earth herself awakens to her maker, translated out of death and into birth. 
The right words come today in the right order, and every word spells freedom and release. Today the gospel crosses every border. All tongues are loosed by the Prince of Peace. Today the lost are found in his translation, whose mother tongue is love in every nation. Hey, this morning, if you're following the news, the world is, well, it feels like things are utterly crazy everywhere you look. Racism is rampant, uh, not only in the United States where there's rioting, but here in Canada too. And we pray for those who suffer under racial oppression. It's cruel, it's evil. And then, in the meantime, we're sending people up to space in new capsules, and we're all in our homes because of a pandemic. The list goes on and on of things that are just feeling just absurd in the world today. Things that we can't make sense of. But this morning, we are going to talk about and explore the person of the Holy Spirit, who does make sense of this world, and who is the great completer of the work that Jesus has, uh, has done and continues to do in us. And so we're going to explore that this morning. Hey, before we do, I have a few announcements uh, that I want to share with us. Uh, and uh, hopefully it will give us a sense of some of the things happening this week uh, through our Lake Ridge community. Uh, so the first is, uh, welcome to our live video here. After this, we often do a Zoom meeting. And this Zoom meeting is a great ch chance for people to connect afterwards. And so you're welcome to, to join that. Uh, I think Evan will, will be hosting that uh, just right after this. And there should be a link over in the side if you're joining us here on Facebook uh, Live. Hey, we have uh, Open Table Online. Uh, this is uh, a bi-weekly meeting uh, right now as well. And it's a casual low-key gathering of women and they meet online at 5.30 p.m. So grab your dinner and we'll eat together. I won't eat together, they will eat t t together. So you can go on lakeridgecommunity.com and check out the small groups. Hey, we're also doing something called uh, Class Connects. And these are little one-time uh, online experiences put together by people in our community. And it's often a hobby or a skill or something that might uh, just kind of draw us together. People get to share what they are passionate about and what they make. So first up, there is a photography class with Michelle Wilson on June 3rd at 7.30 p.m. Uh, and uh, then there's a cooking class with Julie Walton on June 17th at uh, 12 on Zoom. And so both of these classes are free and you can join uh, on our Lake Ridge website there under the small groups. Uh, hey, for youth and kids, uh, there's going to be a Minecraft Mondays. That's at 7.30 p.m. Youth is on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Story time is on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Club 56 is on Thursdays at 3 p.m. There's a whole bunch of things happening, and we, it's just a chance for us to, to stay connected during these uh, strange times. Uh, also, uh, thank you for giving to Lake Ridge during these these times. Uh, our community has just been phenomenal. You have, you have reached out in words of encouragement uh, to each other and to me, and uh, and we're just so grateful for, for that. Uh, thank you for continuing to give, and and uh, for making generosity a part of your life, both to your neighbors and the people around you, uh, and to your church. Uh, we, uh, we just believe that we are uh, called to do something uh, very meaningful here in Chestermere, and uh, we're so grateful for God's provision and for your kindness in that. Hey, I'm just gonna make sure. Ah, uh, yeah, we're still we're we're still good out in in the rain. Hey, welcome to my garden. This is this is where <laughs> this is where every May I take a week off. I take a vacation week, uh, which I just did this past week, and I come and I and I am here. We plant things and we watch things grow and we walk through the garden and we holler at each other and say, Hey, did you know this is growing? Or there's a sprout here? Or I pulled a weed that is actually a very special flower and I'm sorry and so we grow things here and already there's been some flowers on some cherry bushes here and some flowers have already fallen off of some others here things things are growing everything is always in flux and always moving and changing and uh, sometimes we don't know it, which way things are growing are we are we growing and changing for the better or are things dying around us or in us well, this is a bit of the story that we're going to be encountering today as we talk about the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus' disciples were told that the Holy Spirit is about to come upon them. And this is after Jesus died and rose again, and they were confused. They didn't, they didn't know which way forward was. And then they encountered the Holy Spirit. 
Next week, Pastor Evan's going to take us a little bit deeper into the story of when the Holy Spirit actually came upon the disciples, and they spoke in other languages, and they said that there's fire on their heads. It was, it was like a, a mystical, unusual experience for these disciples. Have you ever had an experience of God's Spirit that you can't explain? I often talk to people, and then they kind of, once we've, once we've talked for a little while, some people sometimes say, something happened to me once that I can't explain. Somehow God's Spirit did something inside of me. I was moved by love and compassion for this person. Or I suddenly found myself crying or weeping. Or I found myself laughing with joy. Or I found myself this or that or the other thing. I did something that maybe seemed out of character. And suddenly I was moved in a deep and powerful way. That happened to me when I was young. Uh, I was about to go off to this summer camp, actually. And I was talking to my youth pastor. And I said, I'm going to summer camp. And... and, uh, and and I said, I'm nervous. I'm afraid. I was maybe about 13 years, years old. And he said to me, he said, you should pray uh, that God's spirit would meet you. I, I never really prayed that before. I mean, I talked to Jesus. I talked to God. And I guess I knew somehow that Jesus was God and the Holy Spirit was God. But I've never really asked that the Holy Spirit would do something inside of me. And so I did. I, I did something that I don't often do. But I, but I kneeled down beside my bed because... I guess when I was young, I thought that if you kneel, maybe the prayer is a little bit more in, intense or something. But I kneeled. I said, God, Holy Spirit, I want you to meet me. I want you to meet me in a way that I've never been met before. And I don't really know what I'm asking, uh, but I just want your Holy Spirit to be a part of my life. Now, I follow Jesus, and I've followed God, and this this was good and fine. And... But I read in the Bible that for those who believe in Jesus, that they are also a recipients of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwells in them. And I knew God's Spirit was somehow with me because the Bible said so. Uh, but I, but it was almost like I was asking to like walk with the Spirit, to let the Spirit be the guide in my life, in the same way that the followers of Jesus had the Spirit guiding their life. And so I prayed. And then I went to camp, and on the first night there was this worship service, and there was music and stuff. It was like a guitar. And I remember I was just suddenly, I was so emotional. I started crying and shaking, and I was holding my, I was holding my hands close to me. And I was just utterly moved with deep emotion in ways that I haven't before. But it was the first of several experiences that happened during my teenage years that I one day asked somebody, I said, what is going on? This person said, ah, you've encountered the Holy Spirit. Now, not everybody encounters the Holy Spirit with tears and weeping, uh, but I did, and I know a lot of people have. Other people have encountered the Holy Spirit, and it's changed the way that they've talked to other people, or the way that they've lived in a different way. And so the Holy Spirit actually, physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, completely, physically engages us in our lives today. Jesus died and resurrected a long time ago, and it, the Bible said he's seated at the right hand of the Father, but the Bible says that he then sent his Holy Spirit to be with us. This is what our sermon series is about over the next few weeks, is to say, what happens when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in God's people? Things happen. God's people, who are some ordinary folks, are suddenly empowered in ways that they didn't expect. They're moved in ways they didn't expect. Uh, there's there's sometimes emotion to it. There's sometimes new ways of living attached to it. There's ways that we love our neighbors and the world around us or plant gardens. These are all movements of the Holy Spirit that we should expect because Jesus promised them. Hey, over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about that. But for today, I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about five movements of the Holy Spirit in Scripture. And then Pastor Evan will pick up with it on Sunday. And this will give a little bit of a background to why we're talking about the Holy Spirit. This series, we're calling it Around the Fire. Uh, picture it around a campfire. Uh, but God's Spirit actually warms and enlightens us and gathers us around. But for a long time, uh, people didn't really understand maybe what the Holy Spirit was about. In the Apostles' Creed, we as followers of Jesus, we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. But what does that mean? What does the Holy Spirit do? What does the Holy Spirit do in, in my life? We're going to explore those. But before we get too deep into what the Holy Spirit's doing today, we have to kind of go back. 
So we're going to talk about these five movements of the Holy Spirit, and hopefully this will inspire us to think about what the Holy Spirit's doing maybe in us now and today. The first one is that the Holy Spirit, the revelation of the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit was, uh, God's people were discovering who this Holy Spirit was. The Hebrew people way back in the Old Testament, they knew that God's Spirit hovered over the unformed depths of the world. Somehow this Spirit, this Ruach, which is the Hebrew word for air, or I should say like the vitality air that fills our lungs, that this Spirit hovered over the deep, hovered over the ocean. And they understood that this Spirit of some kind was an extension of God. It wasn't God himself, but the Spirit, it sustained life. But there was more. And they were wondering, who is the Spirit? What is the Spirit doing? Then they discovered something else. As the story of Scripture unfolded, not only was the Spirit there at the beginning, but then the Spirit seemed to activate in people's lives. It said that the artisans who built the temple, that God's Spirit came upon them, and they suddenly had this creative impetus to make things. They made beautiful things, and people watched that and said, God's Spirit has entered them. The same creative Spirit that made the world is now on this artisan. And then certain people, too. There was judges, uh, which are like prophets, and then other prophets, and then certain leaders and kings, and, and people saw that God's Spirit came upon these people and gave them kind of godly wisdom to speak God's words in a, uh, in, and speak justice into unjust times, or to lead people to, towards God as opposed to away from God. And God's Spirit moved in these people's lives, and people saw that and said, so the same Spirit from then, from back then, is now on these people. But it was not enough. In fact, people wondered why God's Spirit might not be on me too. Why is it only for these special folks? And so, it was not enough for a few chosen prophets or kings to experience God's power. And so, the prophets began to foretell about this Messiah, this person who would come, and this person would have on them the Holy Spirit all the time. And that this Holy Spirit from this person would then flow out to everybody else. And people were amazed. They were like, we can't wait for this Messiah to come. Because this Messiah is going to come and then somehow carry the Holy Spirit. We get to see what this Holy Spirit does. What the Spirit does in this Messiah. And maybe that Messiah will make everything right. And people wondered. And they watched. And so the fourth movement is that Jesus comes. And his story is surrounded by the Spirit of God. In his conception, the Spirit of God meets Mary and says, you're going to have a baby. And this baby is going to be the Messiah, the Savior, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. And then he's baptized by the Spirit, water and Spirit with John in the Jordan River. And then he's Jesus is walking by the Spirit. He's ministering by the Spirit. Everything he does, he says, I do by the Spirit of God. And then finally he dies and he's raised to life by who? By the Spirit. It's amazing. It's a profound story. And then Jesus does something more. Jesus doesn't just come and live by the Spirit and then and then leave. But Jesus begins to say that the Spirit of God is for all. It's pouring. I love it. I feel like talking about the Holy Spirit in the rain is the right thing to do, eh? Let's read this here on my soppy notes. Oh man, my Bible's going to be quite wet on the pages that we talk about the Holy Spirit. Let's see here. John 7, 37. Let's read this. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. We're still good here. Good. Everything's getting wet. <laughs> Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered his glory. So Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. It's going to be like living water inside of you. But the Holy Spirit hadn't yet been given. And then later in John 14... The story thickens, the plot thickens. In John 14, 16, it says this. 
Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him, because it isn't looking for him, and doesn't recognize him. But you know him, because he lives with you now, and later will be with you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. So Jesus is saying that from this Father and from him is going to come this advocate, this counselor, this helper, this caregiver who is going to come and he will never leave you. And he's coming to be with you so that we are not going to be orphans. When Jesus left, we weren't going to be left alone. But God's Spirit, the same Spirit that moves in him, is suddenly allowed or welcome to be into each of us. So, the people who are following Jesus, they were mystified by this. They said, what does this mean that this Holy Spirit is going to come and live with us? And so I'm going to end with this. The book of Acts begins. Jesus has died, is res resurrected, and people are standing around going, what next? And so this is how they talk about, this is how the book of Acts begins. Uh, this doctor, Luke, he uh, writes this uh, account to Theophilus. So it goes like this. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving the chosen apostles further instruction through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift of he promised, as I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So they stayed in Jerusalem, it says. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set the dates and times. Are they not for you to know? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So these, suddenly, these people were suddenly told that they were going to receive the whole Holy Spirit. It was a profound picture of what this Pentecost day was about to look like. And so next Sunday, whoa, hey, I got a, I got a visiting umbrella. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> hey, cool. Thank you. Look. Look, well, hey, we, we are almost done. Colin's standing in the rain now. Thank you. Hey, for the followers of Jesus, uh, this coming Holy Spirit was a profound moment for, for them. But it was promised, and they were expecting, because Jesus promised, that the Holy Spirit was about to come upon them, and it would change everything. Friends, the, Holy, the whole reason why we, do, why we have church the, holy re the only reason why we can follow Jesus, the only reason why we can have hope, is because the Holy Spirit has come and is in us as a community now. Let me pray for us. And as we do, I am hopeful that you will begin to start a conversation uh, between you and God, uh, between you and the Holy Spirit, that there would be a movement of life and peace in you during these difficult times. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this rain. Thank you for rain that washes things and nourishes things. And thank you that Jesus said that the living water, or that, that, that he is the living water, and that we can access this living water, and that this living water will be a wellspring of life bubbling up inside of us. So, Heavenly Father, I pray today that this rain would nourish the soil, but that your Holy Spirit would come and, and do work inside of us let us know how loved we are. Heavenly Father, thank you for these friends and for this community and for all that you are doing in us. We love you. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you for this Pentecost Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See, I told you that was going to be great. Preston just has a very unique gift of communication and a very unique gift of just bringing uh, the things of God down and making them so real to us. So thank you, Preston, for sharing that with us. What a great reminder of God's good work in our lives, especially when we might not feel it or sense it or even discern it. Uh, but God's Holy Spirit is just so close to us. Uh, oftentimes we forget the deep work that God is doing. 
wasn't amazing how it just started raining kind of at the end of his sermon, like the Holy Spirit falling on him like rain. Wasn't that amazing? I don't know how he planned that, but Preston's even more amazing than I thought that he was. And I always knew he was quite amazing, but even that was. Preston, good job. Didn't know how you pulled that one off, but good on you. I can definitely learn some things from you. So as we go into our week, friends, let's just constantly be on the lookout for what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives, what he wants to do, that exceedingly abundantly more attitude uh, that the Holy Spirit could just bring into our lives to help to form us more and more into the image of Jesus Christ, our Savior. So take that encouragement this week and go with it. I just pray God's presence, God's Spirit will be with you as you go into your week. So I hope you enjoyed Summer Smorgasbord this week. Can't wait to be back with you again next week. We're going to go to a different place, different topic, uh, but God is going to be with us, and it's going to be great. So North Park here on Friends, and friends from wherever you are watching, God's blessings on you, and I just pray this week will be a great week as you watch for His Spirit, His presence in your lives.